you know how many types of living beings inhabit the Earth? There are studies that suggest they are more than 8 million species, and if we add unknown species, the estimated number could reach a billion. However, among this vast number, there is only one being, humans, capable of the process of thinking, distinguishing himself from all other beings by his intellect. The process of thinking is the arrangement of data and information to reach a certain truth, or, according to the free encyclopedia, the sum of the forms and mental processes performed by the human mind, enabling it to model the world in which it lives. This, in turn, allows him to interact with it more effectively to achieve his goals, plans, desires, and purposes. In summary, it can be said that thinking is the application of the mind to a problem to arrive at a solution. There are processes associated with the thinking process, perception, awareness, sensation, and imagination, all contributing to problem solving and inference as a constant movement of the mind between the known and the unknown. Thinking has orientations, a set of principles that define the path the thinker takes in this process, such as the Marxist, liberal, capitalist, atheistic, Islamic, and others. The thinker cannot deviate from his orientation in the thinking process, even though these orientations intersect with each other. For example, the Islamic thinker cannot explain a phenomenon without attributing it to the creative power of God. While the atheistic thinker subjects it to the power of nature, or the laws of probability. Hence, thinking patterns emerge, such as intuitive thinking, critical thinking, emotional thinking, logical thinking, mathematical thinking, and others, which can be condensed into four main types. Superstitious thinking, religious thinking, scientific thinking, and philosophical thinking. For instance, the phenomenon of rain can be subjected to superstitious thinking, interpreting it as the tears of invisible beings. And for religious thinking, it is considered the power of the Creator. And for scientific thinking, considering it as the condensation of water vapor in the atmospheric layers in the form of clouds moving according to atmospheric pressure zones, and rain falls from them based on temperature variations. And for philosophical thinking, by posing questions about the nature of rainwater and its ability to bring life to the earth. Note that the methods are intertwined, religious thinking does not negate scientific thinking, and philosophical thinking derives from assumptions and reaches proofs that confirm both scientific and religious interpretations. However, superstitious thinking always remains isolated from logic, as it is based on naive and immature principles, leading to its constant failure in explaining any phenomenon. So, what if superstitious thinking were to don the attire of scientific and religious thinking and became predominant, prevalent, and credible? It is strange that in our everyday lives, we unconsciously use all four methods to explain phenomena or determine acceptable models for ideas. When discussing a problem like rising prices, for example, we may attribute it to economic scientific reasons, or ethical religious reasons, or epistemic philosophical reasons, or even mythical reasons, such as some Jewish rabbis harnessing jinn through lower sorcery. Thus, in our overall lives, we use all four methods together to arrive at a certain conviction. However, there are reasons that sometimes lead to errors in thinking, including hastiness in judgment without proper deliberation and valid reasoning, the dominance of emotion over reason, human susceptibility to fascination, adherence to a rigid opinion or thought, lack of information, selective thinking, and other factors that ultimately lead to an error in understanding the truth of something, perhaps turning it upside down. Therefore, it is necessary, first and foremost, 
to eliminate obstacles to thinking and embark on a journey of inquiry with free thinking, free from haste, emotion, preconceived ideas, bias, and the like. In essence, it is about freeing ourselves from the mental programming that has dictated paths for us to follow, leading to predetermined outcomes that serve the programmer's goal. Like the programming that made us see trees as trees, and mountains as mountains. However, recently, a Russian researcher named Lodonarsai presented a new theory that overturns our perspective. He explained that we see the world with closed eyes, adhering to a comfortable thinking pattern within rigid templates of erroneous thought. Since childhood, we have learned about tropical, subtropical, temperate, and boreal forests in the United States, Japan, China, Germany, Poland, Costa Rica, Australia, South America, and Africa. But what if this researcher told us that there are no forests on Earth? His evidence is that every tree in the forests we know, even in Siberia, is no older than 200 years, and only reaches a height of 30 meters. This makes them no more than grass for the real giant trees that we have not seen, and we are not allowed to see, to remain as we observe the world through the usual perspective that has completely distorted the truth. The real, giant trees existed on the earth until 1920, they were a type of trees called sequoias. We are fortunate that humans invented the camera before that time, capturing images during the extermination process that occurred between 1880 and 1920. They appear gigantic to the extent that what we currently know as trees seems like small sticks in front of those giants. Isn't it intriguing? Do not rush, for the real excitement has not yet come. Although you may wonder, how does a living being turn into stone? By returning to the myths of ancient civilizations, we find many stories of humans, animals, and plants transforming into stones. Strangely, these are not just myths. Paleontologists have discovered many human, animal, and plant fossils, living beings that have transformed over time into stones instead of decomposing, as is commonly understood. In the United States, there is an open-air museum for petrified trees scattered across a vast desert area called the Petrified Forest National Park. It exhibits a collection of petrified trees, but they are not sequoia trees, Rather, they are giant silica trees that surpass sequoia trees by leaps and bounds. However, the prevailing conclusion is that this is not a museum but a stage, and these trees have been cut and brought to this place. If someone set up this stage for silica trees that existed for thousands of years, for what purpose? The purpose is very clear, the silica trunks in this museum are so small that they do not even compare to sequoia trees. This is because what is present is not actually trees but branches of trees, as if someone wanted humans to know that silica trees were not giants. However, the truth, which we do not know, is that they were larger than we imagine. Imagine someone showed you a picture of a tree trunk cut with a saw, then told you it's a hill formed from volcanic eruption at the beginning of Earth's formation over 200 million years ago. No problem, he must be crazy, and no one will believe him. But what if he replaced this picture with another one of Devil's Tower? Would you believe him? Of course, you would believe him, 
because geologists say this mountain formed from the flow of volcanic lava at the beginning of Earth's formation. But with a close look, we discover that this lava formed in a perfect hexagonal shape, as if it had its own intelligence. So, believing that Devil's Tower formed from volcanic eruption is like believing a racing car was formed due to an explosion in a Ferrari car factory. Analogies and reasoning belong to the researcher. Don't lose your mind, search now for a cross-sectional image of a tree trunk. If your memory is strong, you must remember studying this in biology class. Have you started to realize that its basic structure consists of hexagonal fibers? And if we remove the bark, will Devil's Tower resemble a bird's eye view? Besides, the fibers are not entirely attached, as in plants, thus, they fall freely. Furthermore, it is covered by a thin outer layer, akin to the thin covering that envelopes fibrous tissues above living organs. Finally, the fibers do not extend towards the ground vertically, instead, they bend resembling the roots of trees. This clearly indicates that asserting Devil's Tower as a mountain is a statement far from the truth, as proven by careful observation and independent thinking. It is evident that Devil's Tower is a cut trunk of a giant silica tree, its length can be calculated using the diameter multiplied by the number 20. Upon doing so, we discover that the height of this tree was not 30 meters like the trees we know, but 6 kilometers. Can you imagine that? Can you dismantle everything you knew and learn to discover a truth deliberately concealed? Do you think this is a singular example pointing to giant silica trees? Well, you need to remove the blindfold from your eyes. Here is the Giant's Causeway in Ireland, another example of an area consisting of 40,000 basalt columns formed due to ancient volcanic eruptions. This is marvelous and means that we can also say a hexagonal paved path is formed by a volcanic eruption. This is how they told us, as if no one has seen how volcanic lava flows, and how it solidifies randomly. The giant's causeway closely resembles the hexagonal formation of the trunk of Devil's Tower, but it extends on the ground, indicating that it is another trunk of a giant silica tree. Do you still believe that talking about these things as tree trunks is nonsense? And that, Devil's Tower, and, the Giant's Causeway, are just two examples indicating that someone deceived us, and concealed the truth about these trees. There are plenty of them on Earth. Scientists call them, mesas, meaning, tables, in Spanish, because they have a flat top like a table. They are sometimes referred to as plateaus, but in reality, they are trunks of giant petrified trees. Notice the resemblance between tree trunks and some plateaus in Australia, Canada, Italy, Namibia, Argentina, South Africa, the United States, Russia, Ethiopia, and Venezuela. This resemblance provokes numerous inquiries, tolling a significant bell in the mind that guides us to an apparent anomaly. There is something we have not witnessed, as if the mind has been programmed to perceive what they desire it to see, becoming blind to clear truths hidden from us. They are in the hundreds, and the peculiar aspect is that the Devil's Tower which is the trunk of a colossal tree with a height of 6 kilometers, is nothing more than the stem of a small plant compared to other trees. For instance, the plateau in Cape Town, South Africa, 
has a diameter of 3 kilometers. This implies, according to the previous equation, that it is the trunk of a colossal silica tree with a towering height of 60 kilometers. Imagine that the branches of this tree are so immense that one of them could accommodate a large residential area with parks, shopping centers, and hospitals. However, your mind will not readily accept that this plateau is, in reality, a trunk of a gigantic tree that existed on Earth with a height of 60 kilometers. Hence, the concept of apocalypse translates into lifting the curtain, as the real world has deliberately been concealed behind the usual curtain using a global brainwashing process and mental programming, keeping our minds captive to the indoctrinated thinking error, far removed from free thinking on the path of seeking the truth. One thing remains before closing this peculiar investigation and departing from this land of wonders to another. We discussed felled trees, but what about broken trees? Compare some images of mountains with images of broken trees, and you will be astonished as well. All that you see now was part of our Earth's ecosystem that earth which was fantastical, magnificent, and more beautiful than depicted by James Cameron in the movie Avatar. Yet, some people desired to become gods, and destroyed everything. The analogy and inference continue for the researcher. Well, if what this researcher is saying is true, and the trees on earth were giants to this extent, what is the purpose of hiding this truth? Because it indicates that humans in the past were giants, affirming religious narratives that Adam, peace be upon him, was 60 arm lengths tall, suggesting a decline in creation. While scientists say this is impossible, as the body weight of a human of this height would lead to collapse, since gravity would not assist the heart in pumping blood to such a height. More importantly, the petrification of trees takes about 50,000 years, and the Stone Age concluded 10,000 years ago BC. If these plateaus are indeed tree trunks, then pre-Stone Age humans must have possessed massive and sophisticated machines capable of cutting such gigantic trees. Moreover, trees of such height contradict the philosophy of gravitational laws and cannot exist on the surface of a sphere spinning at a speed of 1,600 km per hour. To grasp this speed, the Earth rotates faster than the fastest plane known to modern science, and only pilots with specific qualifications and training fly such planes, to prevent the high speed from affecting their nervous systems or causing fainting and even death due to blood pressure. Meanwhile, we ordinary humans fly with the Earth, which rotates at a higher speed, without any training or preparations. But who believes that a hexagonal fiber mountain is the result of a volcanic eruption is scientific and logical, how can then be convinced that demons always seek to obscure the truths and alter the true shape of the earth? Wake up, reconsider everything taught in schools, and don't let mythical thinking hide in the guise of scientific and religious thought to deceive you. Open your eyes and minds to see the truth hidden from you by these demons for one goal. What is it? And who are those hiding the truth from us and imprisoning our minds like horses in stables? And why must we shatter the programming of our minds and use sound free thinking, away from prepackaged concepts behind the guise of science that made us blind to the truth? Perhaps we will find the answer in the upcoming chapters. <laughs>